Hey y'all, welcome back. Today I'm excited to bring you guys along. We're going to do something a little bit different. We are going to be doing a DIY coffee bar. I'm excited, super excited because I've been wanting to do this for so long and hubby is going to be helping. So he's going to be in all of this footage. I'm excited for you guys to see everything and just to bring you along on this process. If you want to see everything that we get into, go ahead and keep watching. So first let's run through a list of the tools that we'll need. This project is super easy to do. Honestly, me and hubby are really amateurs at woodworking. We do have basic skills, but this was really easy for us to do. You're going to need a circular saw, a brad nailer, and the nails for the brad nailer. Ours is an air compressor brad nailer, a drill, a measuring tape, clamps, or a ratcheting bar, a sander or sandpaper for finishing only. Next, let's run through the materials that we'll need. My coffee bar is going to be 33 inches long, 36 inches high, and 20 inches deep. We're going to need five half inch by two feet by four feet pine plywood pieces, 21 feet of 7 sixteenths by one and three eighths pine general purpose board. This was in the trim area. Wayne's cot backing is what they called it. I think it looks more like beadboard, but that one inch wood screws, half inch wood screws, L brackets in two inch and three inch, sandpaper 220 grit, either for your sander or to sand by hand, wood filler, paint, I used one quart in flat, whatever color you want, stain, a small jar, I used Minwax special walnut, and polycrylic, I used polycrylic in sand. So the first piece we're going to start with is going to be the bottom piece. It is a really bowed piece, so that's what we're going to start with since there's going to be a lot of weight on it. It'll kind of help with the bowing. We are going to go ahead and get that piece and cut it down to the size that we want our coffee bar to be. So what we're going to do here is 32 inches by 20 inches deep. Also, in between each cut that we make, I'm going to be sanding down the edges. That way they are nice and smooth. Also, it would be a good idea to sand your wood before you finish the project. That way when you get to painting, you don't have to worry about any finishing sanding. Next, we are going to be attaching the trim, which is the pine general purpose board that we got. We're just gonna be attaching it to all of the sides of this bottom piece. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna make the top piece flush. In other words, if you were to turn it upside down, you would have a hollow piece at the bottom because we want it to be flush with the trim. And then you want to go ahead and sand down this entire piece. That way, like I said, when we're completely done, you don't have to do any finish sanding. You can just go ahead and get to painting. Perfect. And there's the base. Yay! One part done. Phase one is done. So next, since we know we have a limited space to put the coffee bar right here, this empty side over here is going to be little shelves. So we're kind of going to measure around the fridge because the fridge was the most important part for us. So I'm going to put it flush and then you just make a line on the other side of it. All right. Duty calls. So all that we did from here was we put that side of the board on the side of the fridge. That way we could measure exactly how far away we wanted the piece from the fridge once we opened the door and also how tall we wanted it because we had to look at the top of the fridge, the little hinge that it has at the top and make sure that we didn't cut this piece too short or too high. So we just measured that really close and flush to the fridge. That way we made sure 100% that it was gonna be the perfect size. And then we just went out and cut all three pieces. So to make it easy on ourselves, because this isn't an exact measurement, we're just using one of the three sides and we're just tracing it on the other two sides that way they're all the exact same height
Now these are still gonna be the three sides. We're just gonna cut them down to 20 inches, which is gonna be the depth of the coffee bar. Now we're doing the last big cut, which is the top of the coffee bar. So this one we are gonna cut to, what is it, 30? 30, 32, 32. Long, 20 wide. Yes. So here's the base. Here are our three middle pieces. And then our tabletop is over there. So what we're gonna use to put the sides up are gonna be these L brackets. I'll show you guys a picture of them. We're gonna use them like this. And Emma wants to show you all. <laughs> You're a little bit in the way, Emma. Just like that. And we're gonna do that for the sides and for the top. Our straight line. Well, there's our straight line. And then from out here, you can tell a little bit that it is, but it's not too bad. Nah. Nothing we can't fix. Well, y'all, not only is wood very expensive still, it's not worth it because it's all bowed. Yeah, this one is way worse. Well, Pull it. Feel better because your girl loves you. What are we doing? Hmm? What are we doing? She don't even know. She's a little wiggle worm. What are you doing, Emma? What are you Smack doing? Me with, smack me with the tail. And here comes Mila.
So after we got all the L brackets on the bottom pieces, we put the top piece on and we just bread nailed it into the sides, making sure that all of the sides were as straight as they could possibly be before we bread nailed them in. So now, because our wood is so bowed, Hubby just made a cut that is 11 and an eighth. 10 and an eighth interior. 10 diameter. and an eighth interior diameter of our shelf. Length. Oh, length, sorry. <laughs> sorry, it's late. <laughs> 10 and an eighth interior length for our shelf. That way we can make sure that it fits as he's doing right there and that it's even all the way up or as even as we can get it because it's bowed. So just to give you guys an idea of the finishing touches that we're doing on the inside, we are putting those L brackets, these L brackets right here on the inside like that. We're going to do it on all the different sides and then all we'll have left is the frame and the shelves, but the shelves are doing tomorrow because it is late at night already. Not too late. It's nine. It's nine o'clock. It's bedtime. True. So he's over there, he's gonna cut the trim. So to add the trim to the front of the coffee bar, the first thing that we're gonna do is get a piece of trim and measure the top part of the coffee bar. So what would be the tabletop essentially. And we're gonna go ahead and measure it a little bit longer than the actual top that we have right now because we're gonna put the front piece all the way across and then the side pieces are going to butt up to the front piece so we're going to make sure that we leave a little bit of excess on either side so to do that i'm going to hold a piece on the side while hubby brad nails the piece onto the front that way we make sure that that piece is the exact length that we need it to be next we're going to add all of the pieces going down vertically so right here we're just going to measure under the first piece of trim that we put at the top, we're going to measure all the way down to the bottom piece of trim, which we did in the very beginning of the video. And then we're going to measure that length, cut it to that length, and then just go ahead and put it on with the brad nailer. And we're going to do the same thing for the front of the coffee bar going down on each side. We're going to measure from the top all the way to the bottom trim and then cut it and put it on with the bread nailer. So then the next morning we just brought the entire coffee bar in and we put the fridge in just to make sure that it was flush before we did all of the final finishing touches and then we added the two pieces of trim to the sides of the top of the coffee bar and that's a wrap for the trim huh now let's make the shelves right so here it is all finished we got the shelves in and then we just put some trim in front of the shelves so I didn't record us putting the shelves in because it became somewhat of a project to do it. But all that we ended up doing is putting the shelf in itself and then just brad nailing as you can see right here. We already filled the little holes, but we did brad nail right there. And then hubby also added some actual wood screws in just so that they hold completely. And as you can tell, they definitely worked for the structural integrity of the whole coffee bar because the coffee bar doesn't even move anymore. It doesn't wiggle at all. So that worked out really perfect. So as you can tell, like I said, the second shelf is right here and here are our little brad nails for it. And then a couple of screws. And as I said, we just filled them. We also filled every single little crevice. So we filled this part with wood filler 
and then sanded it down so it's completely smooth. So we are ready to stain and paint. And as I said, the trim on the front of the shelves, we just put on the same as we put all of the other trim. It's just brad nails. And of course we filled those as well. And the holes on the inside, this is where the fridge will be. This is where, you know, we put our little screws in and then more brad nails, second shelf, screw and brad nails. So I hope that you guys understand what I'm saying. Literally, we just slid the shelf in through the back because we do have this like lip right here on both sides, which is the framing on the front of the coffee bar. So we did slide the shelf in through the back and then it was a really nice flush fit the way hubby cut it. So they fit really nice and flush in there and they actually held themselves in place. We just used a level to make sure that they were straight. And then, like I said, he brad nailed them in. And then afterwards he used actual screws to make sure that they're really nice and sturdy in there and that they won't move on us. The last thing that I did want to tell you all that we didn't do. And honestly, I always forget for every woodworking project that we do use wood glue. So you want to use wood glue and also your brad nailer or your screws. That way it just holds way better over time. The way hubby ended up doing it, I think it's gonna last really well because we didn't use wood glue. So just in case he actually ended up adding some wood screws to the trim. So I think it'll be fine over time, but we wouldn't have had to do that step if we would have used wood glue and the brad nailer. Now I'm gonna get to the staining. So before I stain, I'm gonna clean off all of the dust that might be on there. And then I'm gonna use a pre-stain first. You wanna use a pre-stain, that way you don't have any splotchinesses because the wood might not accept the stain the same in every area. So a pre-stain helps with that. So we're gonna use the pre-stain, let that dry for 30 minutes, and then we can get to actually staining. So now I can get to staining now that the pre-stain is dried. The stain that I'm gonna use is Minwax Special Walnut. And you can add as many coats as you want to make it as dark as you want. I ended up adding three coats. Dark Secret by Bear. Can you see that? It's gonna look cool. Let's see. All right, y'all, I'm back from Home Depot, another Home Depot run. It feels like I've been going to Home Depot constantly. I think I went three times yesterday, but I'm back and I got my fuel, so I'm a happy camper. But what I went to get was these these foam rollers will save your life when you're painting furniture it has to be these it has to be the foam ones okay if they're any other type they will leave like little hairs and things all over the place so the foam ones they're awesome and then i already had this so now my painting will go so much faster because with the paintbrush it was just taking forever i would be here for hours and honestly i'm just i just really want to get this done because i just really want to see the whole thing set up so yes i'm happy that i have these now let's get back to painting also wanted to mention, if y'all didn't know, you can cover your paint with foil paper and it will keep it nice and moist in there and it won't dry out on you. You can do the same with these two. Once I get the foam roller on here, if like I have to take a break for some reason or even between coats, you can just wrap the foam roller in foil paper and it'll stay nice and ready for you. <laughs> Thank you. 
So after you get done with the foam roller, there are going to be pieces that it can't get to. So you can just use a small angled brush to get into those extra little crevices that the foam roller couldn't get into. All right, y'all. So here it is completely finished. Like you saw in the video, I did three coats of the special walnut from Minwax. If you all don't know why well, I didn't share here on YouTube, but if you want to follow me on Instagram, I am sharing, I had a little bit of difficulty with doing the stain and I learned a lesson. So this video was too long to include in here, but it's going to be on my Instagram. So anyways, yeah, that's three coats of special walnut min wax. And then of course the bottom is all in dark secret. And then I also added two coats of polycrylic on the top and then on all of the rest of it as well. And it's done. So let's go ahead. I need to get the back on it. So to get the back on, which was just the Wayne's cutting from Home Depot that I said we needed in the beginning, I'm just going to use a brad nailer just to get it on all of the edges and secure it nice and good. All right, y'all. Here it is completely finished. Our little DIY coffee bar. Didn't it come out so cute? I'm in love with it. I love how it turned out. And I'm really proud of hubby and I for putting it all together and for being amateur woodworkers for it to come out this cute. I love it. So let's go ahead and add some finishing touches to it. finished got our coffee machines on there as you can tell I have two so I definitely needed a coffee bar because they were taking up a lot of space on the counter so they're perfect and then just a couple of small decor pieces on the side shelves over here and that's it that's how I'm gonna leave it for right now I do have a couple of shelves up here that I'm going to decorate but this video is already really long so I'll do the decorate the coffee bar with me and we'll decorate it for fall in next week's video so stay tuned for that and that's going to be it for today's video y'all i hope that you guys enjoyed if you did don't forget to leave it a like subscribe if you're not already subscribed and i will see you guys in the next one bye guys